11 volumes, 97 chapters in two weeks. Was it worth it? Chainsaw Man. We all know the series is very popular being the 7th best selling manga in 2021. Kind of an old statistic but you get the point it's very popular and especially when the anime came out it was hyped up like crazy but we all know hype doesn't mean the series is particularly good. I mean look at Kagura Bachi for example. Spoilers for the series will be kept to a minimum and will be flagged on screen before they're about to happen if they do. For those reasons I won't be sitting here explaining what exactly the manga is but more giving my review of the series looking at if it deserved the hype and if I I recommend committing the time to reading it or the money to buy it physically. As I do these reviews, I will be placing the series in a tier list among other manga and series that I've read and reviewed on the channel, so stay until the very end to see where I rank it amongst the others. So Chainsaw Man. The first thing that jumped out at me after finishing the series is the consistency of it. From start to finish, there wasn't a single point in the manga where I noticed a decline in writing or where my interest and attention weren't focused on it. Even when I had to go to work, all I could think of was a mixture of what did I just read? trying to really wrap my brain around the fast development of the series, I'll talk on that later, and wondering what is going to happen next, with all the high stakes at play almost every chapter. This is something I was unaware of and wasn't expecting because before starting this project, I watched a bit of the anime only up to the Katana Man fight, and that was a while ago so I really had no information other than the very basic start of series stuff. I had no idea of any further plot points, no idea about any deaths, none of that. Somehow I've been very fortunate with dodging spoilers for a series that I haven't read so I'm thankful for that, let's keep it that way. I thought this would be a longer series, maybe 15 to 17 ish volumes, a bit over 100 chapters, but no, it was quite short in hindsight. This, along with the fast pace of the series and constant action, really was a nice change from other series I've been into, like The Promised Neverland and Boruto, for example, where there's more time to, let's say, breathe in between major fights in those series, which is not a bad thing, don't take that as me complaining, you definitely do need that, but in Chainsaw Man, it was very much action packed, this man Denji or the Devil Hunters could not catch a break. The issue I have with this, at least for me, it lacked in certain explanations on a thing or two, not fully fleshing out why something happened or what the cause of it was, which wasn't for anything major, like I'm pretty sure every main concept or plot point was addressed and explained sometime during the manga, usually later on in the series as it was wrapping up, but maybe one or two small things slipped through the cracks. I remember actually asking a buddy of mine on why a certain thing happened or what the explanation for it was since he read it way before I did, but keep in mind I just finished binging a different series for the last month, then instantly jumped into this one even staying up until like 6am or late in the night just reading the manga, only getting around 4 hours of sleep for consecutive days, so this might just be a me failing to retain a certain information issue, but that was just my experience on the topic. One thing this series does that I will always praise the series for doing, even if it goes against my own personal feelings and biases, is it isn't afraid to kill off members of its cast in order to keep the story moving or push the plot in a certain direction. Obviously, this isn't always a good thing, because if it's a fan favorite character and they leave the story, clearly some people will be pissed and start resenting the show or the manga. This happened probably most notably with JJK and a certain someone who perished, sending fans crashing out with spewing hate on Twitter and death threats towards the author. Chainsaw Man utilized this cast very well and fleshed out the characters enough for when it was their time to be killed off, even though we were upset. I mean, my favorite character in the whole series got done dirty. It didn't feel as if the character was wasted or anything like that, and every time someone important did fall victim to this, added layers to Denji's character development and helped continue pushing the plot forward in interesting and captivating ways that otherwise couldn't be achieved without the sacrifices. There's something about the feeling of literally no character being safe from death and removal from the series that really keeps me into the story and wondering what happens next on cliffhangers and future chapters because if we just move throughout the series knowing most likely these characters aren't going to die, then it's much harder for me to get, you know, into the fight or feel the intensity and high stakes of it if at the end of the day I know this certain person won't die or lose. But when that first really important character dies in a series and you get the sense of Damn, if he's gone then no one's safe, anyone could perish at any time. It makes everything more immersive and stressful in ways that I can't really describe. Getting into the characters deeper, the cast is phenomenal. From the devil hunters to the devils themselves, every single character in this story I genuinely liked and was never disappointed seeing on panel or getting more dialogue about them. And honestly, I wouldn't even mind if a lot of them got their own specific arcs dedicated to them, I like them all that much. In almost every other series I've watched or read, there's always been those one or two characters I didn't like and couldn't care less about and seeing them on screen or panel was just annoying, like I don't like them at all and find them obnoxious. And then the story will dedicate episodes to them, or even in the anime of Borto, they gave a character like Chocho, who is my least favorite character in any series I've ever consumed, 
a whole arc that was the worst thing ever animated, I promise you. When it came to Chainsaw Man though, none of that. Every new character had some cool design, skill, backstory, shtick, whatever you want to call it. Every character had one, and I'd even go as far as saying a majority of these characters could be the MC in their own series, and it will be just as successful as this one. Like, tell me you wouldn't watch a series about Aki, or Power, or this dude, or these girls. Because I most definitely would, and I promise you I'm not alone in thinking that. In terms of how it was to actually read the manga, I don't think there's a better way to put it than just good. I don't mean this in a negative way or anything, but out of the very small selection of manga that I've read, this was the most basic paneling and layout or whatever you want to call it out of them all. I came off reading The Promised Neverland, which I'm not going to sit here and praise it as it's not the video for this, but when I first started reading Chainsaw Man, I instantly noticed how basic and bare bones the paneling was. Like I said, I don't mean this in a bad way, it was very easy to digest and everything, but there was just nothing insanely special about it. It was just very solid, I have no complaints. Unfortunately, now I have to get to the negative about the series. It was underwhelming. This might sound contradicting because I just spent the last how long praising it and talking about how interesting and great the story was and everything, but this series has been hyped up beyond belief and I'm constantly seeing people claiming it's better than other series and how it's their favorite and everything, which like hey, I'm not here to tell you what you can like and what you can't, but I'm going into this with the thought of this is going to be a top 3 manga for me, which it just wasn't and it wasn't even close by being in my like top 5 series either. This sadly left me disappointed in a sense, which does suck because like I said, Chainsaw Man is amazing. It's a really solid, great series and I really have no complaints about it as you can tell from this video. But it suffers from being too overhyped on the internet in my opinion, and I was left with expecting more than I received. I'll reiterate it again because I know people are going to say something about this. I really enjoyed Chainsaw Man and it was an amazing series. I don't mean this as me taking shots at the series, but I thought it would be better than it actually was. For the tier list, since this is something I want to do every time I finish a manga to review on this channel as kind of a comparison to each other on which one I think is the best out of them all. So as you can see I have tiers S down to D. This might change in the future but I'll leave it like this for now. For the Promised Neverland review, it's actually done before I recorded this and I didn't do it there so I'll slap it up in a spot right now and honestly I'm putting it in A. Not sure when my review of the series will come out, but when it does, I'll explain why I rate it so highly. Like I said though, this whole tier list is subject to change because opinions change, recency bias is a thing, but for now it's an A. Naruto is an easy S, I don't really need to explain myself here, it's my favorite anime and manga, I've watched it a bunch, I've read it a bunch, it was the first anime I've ever seen and in my opinion, it's the GOAT. Anyway, for actually putting Chainsaw Man on this, I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate, but for now I'm gonna put it in B. Not saying it's bad or anything, but I personally don't think it's on the tier of Promised Neverland or Naruto until currently. But after a while, my thoughts on the series could change and who knows, maybe Chainsaw Man will be put in A and others will be moved down. We'll just have to wait and find out. So was this two weeks spent reading the manga worth it? Do I recommend it? 100% yes. It should have been obvious by now with what was stated, but yeah, I'd say it was well worth the two weeks of reading and I would recommend it to anyone who likes shonen. I would find it difficult to believe someone actually hated reading the manga. I do wish it was longer, but I think the shorter size of it could be appealing to certain people who maybe don't want to commit to a long Longer series but want to get the fun shown in battling aspects of manga. Hey, I'm close to 1000 subscribers and I'm really trying to get there by the end of the month. I'd appreciate any help towards that goal. If you like this video, let me know in the comments and tell me which series I should read next or if I should change the rankings around on this tier list. Have a good day.